So if you try to break into the slave trade, if you go to Africa in your own ship and try to enslave Africans and ship them to the Americas, the Royal Navy will catch you. They, they at certain points, will, will capture you. And not only that, they will imprison you without a jury trial. It's very important because, you know, in the 17th century, what was more English than the constitutional right to a jury trial? This was a sacred sort of birth birthright. But the African company was using sort of pernicious legal innovations to enforce its monopoly. So the company's behaving in ways that aren't, aren't English. It's depicted by its opponents as the kind of embodiment of all things that is not English. And what's required is to rebuild and re-establish uh, and recondition um, the transatlantic slave trade around the English values, and especially a distinctively English notion of freedom. So these traders feel that unless their freedom to be slave traders is recognized by the king and parliament, that their rights are being curtailed. Absolutely. So the freedom to be slave traders. You know, cheek by jowl comes this clearly articulated belief that it is a almost sacred English birthright to have access to a trade in enslaved human beings. Using the argument of freedom, the independent traders smashed the royal monopoly. And turned Britain into the biggest slave trading nation in the world. By the 1760s, up to 40,000 Africans each year were being transported across the Atlantic in British ships. The Royal Africa Company made a lot of money for the Stuart Kings and its shareholders, but it was never able to supply the British colonies in the West Indies and North America with enough slaves to meet demand. The private, independent traders were far more efficient. To use the rather clinical language of modern business, they cut their overheads, they reduced wastage, and they expanded capacity. Within 15 years, they had increased the supply of slaves to the British colonies by 300%. By the end of the 18th century, the profits from slavery were helping to fuel Britain's industrial revolution. And it also had an impact across the globe, transforming Britain's colonies. <laughs> 